The World Surf League Challenger Series arrives in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil for the final event of the 2023 season. Sakurama comes alive with passion and rhythm as tens of thousands pack the Maracana of surf to witness the next generation fight for qualification on the championship tour. With spots already secure, the time is now for challengers to channel the energy on the beach and punch their ticket to surfing's biggest stage. At the 2023 Corona Sakurema Pro presented by Banco do Brasil, the future is now. Welcome to Dawn Patrol here at the Corona Sakurama Pro presented by Banco do Brasil. We are in Itaúna Beach here in the wonderful surf town of Sakurama known as the Maracanã, the surf, the surf stadium if you would. And this is the final Challenger Series event and we're going to set the cast for the CT Tour. We're going to get into all that stuff on the Dawn Patrol, but first, I'm Kai Pagura along with Maida Pops and Mitchell Salazar. I'm going to start with you, Maria. How excited are you to get it going? I mean, this event is going to be all about qualification for the 2024 Championship Tour. Yes, Kaipo, we are so excited to have this championship back here in Sakurema. Sakurema is such a nice place, a world-class surfing place, and we are very happy and excited to see who's going to be on the Championship Tour next year. That's right. Mitchell, we got eight more slots for the men available. We got... Four more slots for the women available. And it's a tight group for when we talk about this qualification right now. It's all coming down to this final event. It truly is. And for the first time ever, qualification will finish in Brazil on the Challenger Series level. So the implications for this event here are massive. But also the waves on offer at this kind of event, Kaipo, especially with two goofy footers winning over in Arisera. This is huge for a lot of these surfers that have potential to qualify for the first time ever for the championship tour. To quote Run DMC, I'm going to tell you right now. You know what it is out there? It's tricky. Tricky, 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 tricky. And with that, uh, let's take a look at exactly where we are and set the scene here at the Surf Stadium as we buzz down from outer space into Brazil, Mitchell, and the small town of Sacarema, but that is a wave-rich region. Definitely is in the state of Rio, and as you can see right here, just a couple hours north of that beautiful city, but plenty of waves on offer. You see Bahia, which is where we normally have the CT event when the waves are firing, but at Itaúna, this is a world-class beach break, and you can definitely see that all of that sand that just comes through from Bahia over at that river mouth tends to move over here. We have a big predominant wind swell in the water, so it does mean that there is a good amount of swell that will reside for, I would think, most of the waiting period of the event, but as you can see here, this beach is huge, and depending on the swell condition and the swell direction, things will change quite drastically. But as of right now, it definitely seems like it's going to be more of a beach break. And that sand being brought out by the river mouth over there, Kaipo, it tends to affect the way this wave breaks. And that's the spot where we're at right now. You want to see something more from the east? We have a lot of south in the water right now. You can see the rock formation there. And that rock formation holds the sand. So it's got a very dependable sandbar here in Itauna. It's wide open to, to different swells. So that's why it's so dependable. Tricky out there today. But let's see what we're going to get going today. How are we going to get going? We'll find out. We have uh, Rachel Apollonio along with Tours and Competitions, Travis Logie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Travis. So welcome back to Brazil. We are all excited to be back in Sacorema. Tell us, what is the call for today? Are we on? Thanks, Rachel. Super excited to be back in Brazil and back in Sacarema specifically. And good news, we are on. Um, 8 o'clock start. We're going to start off with men's round one and then go straight into women's round one. The waves are great. There's like a lot of chunk and bump left in it from the storm that came through yesterday. But there's swell. The storm brought some swell and that's what we want. What about the rest of the week? Can you give us an overall view about the forecast? 
Yeah, sure. The forecast looks really good. Um, the, the final two days of the event window look amazing. And then the next two or three days, the wind should be more preferable for the winds. The swell will drop a little bit, but it'll still be great conditions. So we've got a good couple of days ahead of us. Perfect. It's going to be an exciting day. Watch live. Back to you guys. <laughs> And we are excited. Let's take a look at the conditions as we look out to see here. It's jumbled up. It's a mix. But the good news is this short period swell is providing us with very consistent waves, Mitchell. Four to six foot on the face. Yeah, but the wind, Kaipo, has picked up quite a bit. I mean, last night, as Travis was saying, a good amount of wind. But uh, as of right now, it's a little bit calm. It should pick up throughout the day. But predominantly a south swell, which is a wind swell here. And a couple of people have already qualified for the CT Kipes. That's right. Get ready. Cole, the Hammer Hausman, Jacob, Chippo, Wilcox. We're going to see the two Goofy Foots on the 2024 Championship Tour. And S Sally Fix Gibbons back again. This is going to be, I believe, her 14th season on the Championship Tour, Marina. Yeah, it's so exciting to see Sally qualified again. And it's going to, they're going to put on a show for sure. We're going to be back with more here at the Dawn Patrol. We'll take a look at the women's rankings and some scenarios. Back after this. Taking a look at the Challenger Series, and so far, the five events that have transpired. We start in Australia, Snapper Rocks for event number one, then to the classic Australian break of North Narrabeen, on to South Africa to Belido. Huntington Beach was stop number four at the U.S. Open of Surfing. We just got off Portugal for stop number five at Aracera, and that is setting us up for the final event here in Brazil, in Sacramento, Caipo Maria Pops as well as Mitchell Salazar, and we're taking a look at, really, qualifications. Let's take a look at our rankings coming in to this final stop of the Challenger Series. Remember, Mitchell, that CT cut line is at number five, and Isabella Nichols is right on the line, but right behind her, Luana Silva, Bronte McCauley, and Ellie Harris is hot on her heels. And Vakina Fierro, too, at number nine. She still has a chance here at Kaipo. Let's see if she can get it done with a few heats. Well, who do we think is uh, really geared up for this one? Well, it would have to be Alyssa Spencer. As Alyssa, last year here in Sakurama, was dominant coming through. Won every heat on the way to her victory. And guess what? She's already a winner coming off a win in Aracera to a place that she already knows how to win. So Alyssa Spencer... It's got to be one of your favorites here, Maida. Who else do you think is going to qualify on the women's side? Actually, Luana Silva is our Brazilian hopes because Luana, she was running up now in Edicida. She has been building some momentum. She was fifth in the U.S. Open. So we are rooting for her here in Brazil. She, but she has to win this event to guarantee her spot for 2000. And 24, but at least she has a chance. Yeah, there is our qualification scenarios, Mitchell. And uh, quarterfinals will do it for India Robinson and Sawyer Limblad. Yeah, and finals appearances for Spencer Nichols and McCauley. And with the win, Luana Silva guarantees her spot 
on the 2024 championship tour season. But uh, just looking at Sally Fitzgibbon, she's made finals day in every single appearance so far this, this season, which has been really impressive. Doesn't even need to be here. She's already qualified. But just looking at these names, a couple of people that have already been on tour like India, like Isabella, Bronte, and Luana. But would really be nice to see Alyssa qualify for the first time, Kaipo. Alyssa Spencer coming so close three times in her young career on making the CT and just a couple of spots away in those years, just coming off a heartbreak last year at Haliva. Maybe this year is going to be the year for Alyssa Spencer. Well, we're going to take a break right now. We got more for you on the Dawn Patrol here at the Corona Sakurama Pro presented by Banco do Brazil. We got men's to talk about right after the break. It's the Dawn Patrol here at the Corona Sakurama Pro, presented by Banco do Brazil. And uh, the competition has been called on. We are going to start with the men's round of 80. We just come out of a video of some of the winners so far this year in the 5 CS series. We started out with Sammy Pupo taking a win at Snapper. Cole Hauschman went back to back. Narabin and then Belito. Eli Hanneman made a splash for his win over at Huntington Beach and just David Silva coming off a win in Aracero, Portugal. We can take a look at our rankings right here. Mitchell Salazar and uh, looks like Eli with that win in Huntington Beach is still above that cut line. Yeah, number eight right now. Kate Matson number nine. So a couple of hopefuls for North America and Hawaii right there. But, uh, you know, speaking of somebody from North America that's been close to qualifying a couple times, Nolan Raposa, number 19. He has a good chance of winning right here. But my pick to really make a splash here and move up in the ranking to see Michelani Devault. He's been a former CT surfer himself. He knows what he's capable of, and especially at a wave like this that has a lot of power in comparison to where he's from on Maui, I feel like he has a great chance, Kaipo. Yeah, Emai wanting to return to the championship tour where he's already had a taste of what it is on the big stage, fell off because of that mid-season cut. Take a look here, Maida, at some of our qualification scenarios Eli Hanneman, Federico Marias, Jake Marshall, David Silva off of that win can qualify with a quarterfinal. Yeah, David Silva just put on a show in Edisita with a very classy backhand surfing. And he just need to be in fifth position here. He, he just need a quarterfinal. So, yeah, we're looking for him. Jackson Baker. Mitchell, we'd love to see him back on tour. He needs to make the final. But speaking of needs to make the final, Mateus Hurdy right here on the cusp of CT qualification. But then again, as the scenarios play out, Maida, Mateus is going to make a splash here. He needs to make the final. Yeah, he needs to make the final, but he's getting better each competition. He was fifth in U the US Open and now third in Edicera. He put on a show with a very strong air game there. He knows the path here and he's, he's pretty strong right now. Well, we got more for the Dawn Patrol here, day number one at the Corona Sakurama Pro, presented by Banco Pro Brazil. Stick around, we're just getting the day going. Here at the Corona Sakurama Pro, presented by Banco do Brazil. Let's make it official with the Brazilian national anthem, Jose Ju Jr. from the Brazil Voice. He's going to perform it for us right now to get the day going. Opening day here in Sakurama. Vi 
Não dou Ipiranga as margens plácidas De um povo heróico, brado, retumbante E o sol da liberdade em raios fugidos Brilhou no céu da pátria nesse instante Se o penhor dessa igualdade Conseguimos conquistar com o braço forte Em teu seio, ó liberdade Desafia o nosso peito a própria morte Ó pátria amada, idolatrada, salve, salve Brasil, um sonho intenso, um raio vívido De amor e de esperança a terra desce Sim, teu formoso céu risonho e límpido A imagem do cruzeiro resplandece Gigante pela própria natureza És bela, és forte, impávido, colosso Se teu futuro espelha essa grandeza Terra adorada Entre outras mil és tu, Brasil, ó pátria amada dos filhos desse solo és mãe gentil, pátria amada Brasil. All right, well, we got the day going there. Joseo Jr. of the Voice Brazil fame and Uh, that was the national anthem. That's the official start. If you're just tuning in right now, we got the call. We're going to start with the men's round of 80. Uh, first day of the waiting period, I'm Kuiper Guerrero, Maria Pops, and Mitchell Salazar. Um, Maida, we have a couple of Brazilian C-tiers uh, here. Uh, João Chianca, who's a local boy, local hero, as well as Miguel Pupo. We'll see them in the draw. Yeah, we will see Miguel. He's just getting well with his injury. I, I saw him surfing in Marizias. He's feeling pretty well right, right now. And it's good to see him surfing back here in Sacorema. And also João Chianca, a local hero, knows how to adapt himself in every condition here in Sacorema. So they're going to put a lot in the show, Mitch. Yeah, and João's performance throughout the season and on the CT Kaipo gets his first CT victory over in Portugal, number four in the world as he went in the lower trestles. I mean, he went out and destroyed Jack Robinson in the opening match of that finals and was able to do it on the rights and the lefts too. But just the performance that he was able to put on, first match of the event, being one of the few underdogs in the event too, and beating Jack Robinson, who was just gaining momentum after the win in Tahiti. This was a big performance. Did lose out to eventual runner-up to the world championship, Ethan Ewing. But I mean, starting off this way, especially when you're considered an underdog, pretty big stuff from Joao. The story of Chumbinho, Joao Chianca, is an impressive one and an inspirational one. Fell off tour, had to come back through this Challenger series to get back on tour in 2023. Came back with a vengeance in 2023, finishing fourth in the world. Yeah. That was a, a huge, huge thing for the local boy, João Chianca. And it all started here, really. I mean, he didn't have the start of the season on the Challenger last year. They really got him in position to be in the top five, to eventually qualify. Got a semifinal finish here and then went over to Haleiva and got another good performance and eventually qualified for the CT. Next thing you know, he's a top five surfer. So it all starts here. Kaipo Challenger Series is it's what it's all about. And also the Challenger Series can be looked at as, as a testing ground. We saw Gabe Medina last year mm -hmm. win this event, but Gabe's motivation really was to get here and work on his game here at Itauna, and he came out victorious. So it's a tune-up for the C-tiers. I feel it's going to be a tune-up for Miguel Pupo as he's coming back, Mitchell, uh, from an injury. He's got an injury wild card for this 2024 season. But it's going to be interesting to see Miggy and his form here. Yeah, and probably one of the more underappreciated surfers on the championship tour. In 2022, he was number six in the world. I mean, the guy has all the talent in the world. But I think at a beach break like this, especially coming from Maracias, he has a real good chance of making finals day. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him win the event overall, Kaipo. Yeah. Maira, have you had any intel? Have you been seeing Miguel Pupo surf around and, and in free surf sessions at all? Yeah, actually I did in Marizias. It was a QS competition, and he didn't 
went pretty well, but he said that he was feeling good and he was trying to, to test his boards again and surfing. So it's going to be really nice to see him here. He knows pre pretty well this wave, so it's going to be cool. You know what's going to be really nice is to see if his younger brother, Samuel, is able to get the job done here and join big brother Miguel on the 2024 championship tour. That's a whole nother thing that we can dig into. I'm sure Miguel's going to be here competing, but he's also going to be here really supporting Samuel in his effort. Yeah, they're always like supporting each other. It's interesting to see. It's always nice to see two brothers surfing against each other and helping each other. So, and Samuel... It really has chances to qualify, and he's looking forward for that. Yeah, this is going to be it for Sammy Pupo, Mitchell. This is, it's all in, in yeah. this last stop of the Challenger Series for him. And I don't mean to be harsh, but if you're winning a Challenger Series event and you're not, you're not qualifying for the championship tour, then something's going wrong. I mean, the guy made the finals day here at the CT event. Remember, him and Jadson Andre took an overnight flight, went straight to Belito, both lost out on their first heat that they served. So if you're doing that here and you're not able to make it back onto the championship tour after winning one of those six events... Something's wrong, Kaipo. Want to see him do well here. Yeah, and really to quantify that, when we talk about the Challenger Series is we have six events on the Challenger Series. Your top four finishes are what's counted towards your ranking, and that's where we take the top ten. So for all of these surfers, especially the surfers already, you know, um, with the throwaways, this is going to where it's going to have to happen. Waiting for right now? Sounds like the buzzer's on and the clock is on. We got the first heat of the day out in the water in these uh, jumbled conditions here in Itana, but very, very consistent.